Hey everybody, we haven't been up on level 1C for quite a long time. Uh, we've had some leakage up there in the past with some rainwater getting in, so I thought it'd be a good idea to go up, and, especially with all the rain we've had lately, uh, to go up and have a look around and see if everything is still high and dry. So let's uh, head on up and see what there is to see. This is a, a large hydraulic pump, and there's a big reservoir of hydraulic oil right here. And when you run the pump, you pump hydraulic fluid into these large cylinders. These are called accumulators. There's 12 of them. And they're just big cylinders, and, and in, inside each cylinder, there's a floating piston. And on this side of the piston there's hydraulic oil and on the other side there's high pressure nitrogen gas and that comes from a huge reservoir right here it's called a nitrogen receiver it's a big tank right here and so what happens is when you pump oil hydraulic oil against the piston you push the piston back in this direction forcing the gas into the nitrogen receiver. Now, when the piston is all the way to the end of the cylinder, you close the valves, you shut off the pump, and it stays like that. It has accumulated energy. So, when you want to open the silo door, at the appropriate time, when you turn keys, for example, in the control center, these electric valves operate and relieve pressure on this side of the piston which then causes the gas to come roaring in here and push the piston in front of it, which forces the hydraulic fluid and all these pipes uh, through the valves over to the other side, into the motor, and back again. So, pretty simple. There's enough stored energy in these accumulators that you can open the door and close it and open it again without ever having to run the pump. And you can run the whole thing on batteries, right? So we, 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 all, we say that you can launch the batteries, and sorry, launch the missile on battery power alone. That sounds impressive, except really all you're doing is using the batteries to open the valves, right? The batteries aren't running any motors or anything, it's just opening the valves. So it's a little less impressive uh, than it probably sounds. Okay, so I came up here a number of years ago, and what should I find but these drip marks here, and there's little, almost like stalactites, like in a cave growing here. I thought, oh, this, this is not good. So if you look up from where this was, is, you can see that there's an electrical outlet, an electrical conduit up there that's badly corroded. What that means is, somehow, water is getting into that. So that's not good. So I looked and I thought, where does that conduit go? Well, it kind of goes here, and it goes here, and it goes into this electrical box right here. This is the control panel for the door. So for maintenance purposes, you can open and close the doors from right here. So that cable ends up right here, and you can see it too is corroded. There's corrosion on top of the cabinet you probably can't see, and there's also corrosion down here on this cabinet. And I thought, oh man, this could be bad. So I opened this thing, and it's, it's high and dry inside, no problem at all. So I thought, well, let's open this one. So I pulled the screws off, and there's a rubber gasket on this. It's called a NEMA 7 seal, in case anyone asks. Uh, there's a rubber gasket on here, and it was kind of stuck. And so I used my knife to kind of pry it open, and the box just popped open all of a sudden, and it was full of water right to here, and I got every drop of that in my lap. So, uh, it turned out that there was a leak uh, in the silo, top side, and we found where that was, and we put a bunch of caulk in there. Uh, we haven't looked at it since, and it's been a long time, so 
with all the rain we had, I thought maybe it'd be a good idea to come down here and, and take a look and see what's going on. So let's uh, let's take the screws off here and see what we can find. Try real hard not to lose little springs. It's still dry, but you can see that this whole thing was very badly damaged because it was just all, it was submerged entirely in water up to about here. Really too bad. Uh, well, I mean, it's not like the door works anymore, so it's, you know, still you like to try to keep this stuff as pristine as possible. So dry is good. Okay. Squeeze back in here. Be careful not to Lose the little springs. One side. Up nice and tight. Okay, we're good. Uh, before we go, let's take a look over here. Uh, there's some interesting graffiti over here. I don't like to show graffiti on the complex, uh, really, because most of it is pretty rude. But this is actually fairly interesting. So take a look. This is like a barnyard scene. There's a, like a rabbit standing on two feet. Here's the barn. There's a little fence running around there. And this is probably the artist's signature, but we have not been able to interpret that. Uh, and this is what I have come to call a hideous clown sitting at a desk. No idea what that's all about. And over here is a little word, cute. So who knows who did this? Could be maintenance people, uh, you know, when they're bored waiting for stuff to happen. No way of going for sure. Well, one more thing. As long as I'm standing right here, this is a good place to demonstrate shock isolation. Uh, this level, <coughs> excuse me, this level is shock isolated, and unlike all of the other levels, this one you can actually get moving pretty easily. I can press back and forth here and get the whole place swinging back and forth really well. And again, shock isolation is just to um, protect against nuclear shock waves. So there's a quick uh, explanation and a little tour of level one C. Uh, we'll take a look over on one A here in a future video. So. Thanks for watching.